Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is episode 38 of Super Flashy Arrow of Tomorrow. I am your host, Sir Cussalot Travis Pointer, and I am joined once again, making her return, my co host, Mara the Shark Watkins. I don't know the rest of the tune, but I'm back, y'all. She don't even know the Rocky tune. You know what? You Shut just... up. Shut up. Listen. She doesn't know Nicolas Cage movies. She doesn't know the Rocky tune. It's just, just, why do I keep you around? I don't understand. Because I'm awesome and I'm hilarious. I know you think so. Oh, man. Y'all couldn't see that face, but I did. How are you, Mara? I'm great. You know, I do apologize for not being here the past few weeks. I've had a really hectic, like, work schedule. Yeah, yeah. But I am happy that Matt's been able to, you know, fill in for me. I feel like we're in, like, a custody battle with you. They're both trying to make your claim. Yeah. Sharing custody. Yeah, pretty much. (sighs) But, yeah, what we're here for is to discuss... The Arrowverse, Supergirl, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Arrow. So let's talk about them, shall we? Woohoo, let's get started. Yeah. We can start with Supergirl. This episode was called Wake Up. Mm. So, let's, uh,. Let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room that I know you want to talk about. Is your boy's back? Yeah. Not as excited that he's back now that he's back. <laughs> yeah, he's back, but uh, yeah, not the way you wanted him, huh? <laughs> Homie's been gone for to him seven years yeah, instead man. of seven months. Seven years is a long time. I'm just like, that's so uncomfortable. And not only does he come back after seven years, funny quotes, but this nigga's fucking married and Supergirl saved her life. Like, after, you know, I had this (laughs) feeling that in the pod, because I'm jumping real far ahead into the episode, I had a feeling that I thought, like, maybe it was her mom. Cause you know how we kept seeing visions of Monel and her mom. I thought maybe this is her. Maybe he's found. Maybe he's found the rest of them. Maybe that's what's going on. It's about the Kryptonians and then, so you or some know, shit. Yeah. Right, cause like I just have like this inkling that not every Kryptonian is dead. Like I feel like they over exaggerated that every Kryptonian's dead. And so fucking, you know, Supergirl saves her, and I'm just like, oh cool, she gets Monel and her mom back. And then it's some random bitch. And then it turns out this random bitch is Mono's wife. And I was just like, no, you did not just have me save your fucking wife. <laughs> well, I mean... I was like, I wish that bitch drowned. <laughs> See, I think she would have still saved her if she knew he was. she was his wife, though. She would have still saved her. No, I mean, like, I wish, like, the writers had drowned her. Like, it was some, made out of something that Supergirl also couldn't punch through. Why are you so angry? I'm, I'm. I have feelings. Like I had so many feelings about this episode. It's so unnecessary. It's not her fault. Like <laughs> I didn't say it was her fault, but she's an inconvenience. I'm sorry if her love for my nails is an inconvenience to you. Um. Let's see what else was happening in this episode. Ah. Nothing. Oh yes, there was. We got the awakening of rain. Oh, yeah. We finally did get that. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about nothing. Just because you were distracted by the fact that Monel has a wife. Other important things happened. <laughs> I'm now curious to see how that whole rain is going to, is that, that's going to play out. Yeah. I mean, I can't wait to see that play out. She does some searching and she just like. She was like, I don't want this. And it's like, too late, bitch. Now you've gone searching for shit. Now you're getting all this other shit. Mm-hmm. Awaken. You know. Everybody's waking up. 
Yup. But we also got some cute moments with John and his father. Yeah, the whole thing, like, his dad hadn't been to the bathroom in, like, three weeks. <laughs> and I was just like, bro, you can get a UTI. Like, guys can get those, too. Like, dude. dude like, that's like... that sucks. Like, I don't know how Martian bladder systems work, but I'm pretty sure, like, so bad stuff can happen when you don't pee for three weeks. Maybe. I mean, there's a certain alien race on the Orville that only pees once a year. That's weird. <laughs> um... I could have gone a whole lifetime without knowing that. Hey, I mean, we were we already talking about his, you know, Jean's father not peeing. So, um, let's see. Yeah, Monel's been gone for seven years. Oh, so we had like you know some awkward moments with Jean and his father because he doesn't know how to not he, be at work. Yeah, but he went. He took. He took a good first step. He got them an apartment, a really nice looking apartment. It is. It is. It I'm kind of curious what he pays per month on that apartment. Mm, I'm sure, you know. I'm sure the office pays the bills. <laughs> Dio picks up the tab on that one, most likely. Dio um, is just like, yeah, just. Choose one that doesn't go over this, but. Feel free to have fun with that. Yeah, but I will say I I couldn't see myself sharing an apartment with my father though. Like I don't know. I feel like as long as you have like your own rooms far separate from each other, nope, you can get through it. Nope. I need the whole house. <laughs> you're not even gonna do like you're not even gonna do like different wings. Nope. Because there's still some shared spaces, and I need to be able to walk around butt naked in all spaces of my house. <laughs> Even if I don't actually do it all the time, I need to have the option. I guess so. Mm-hmm. Hi. Let's see. Jesus. Um... So why do you think Monel was being so secretive about shit, though? Because he didn't want Car to know that he was married, like all fucked niggas do. I mean, but he wasn't really like on no fuck nigga shit with it, though. Like, it had been seven years. He was. When he, <laughs> I mean, like, but we didn't know this until everything had happened. Okay, if you think about it, like, he wasn't telling them anything about this shit. He didn't tell them who those people were. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't until Supergirl, till Kara tried to stop him and take him back to D.E.O. where he was kind of just like, save her and stuff like that. And then when she finally woke up, that's when he goes, oh, yeah, Kara, this is my wife. It's like before then, like before he saved her, like, Kara, it's been seven years and stuff like that. So you really think like all that hiding and all that was just because he didn't want her to know he was married? Fuck yeah, because if you saw, he kept trying to avoid, every time she would talk about stuff, he became very, very, like, not agitated, but he kept trying to change the subject or kept trying to, like, get around stuff, and then eventually he kind of, like, blew up at her, and he's like, Cara, it's been, like, seven years, like, because she's like, why are you different, boo? And he's like, Cara, it's been seven years, not seven months, like, I, I had know. to move on, I think but it's I kept more this reminder that. of you, boo. I think it's more to it than that. Like, I think there's more of a reason why he didn't say something than just he didn't want her to Because they probably have children, too. Like, (laughs) back to whatever year they come from, they probably have, like, five children. Five little alien children, like, just running around. I'm done. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Like I said, I think there's more to it than that, but we'll see. Well, if he's, if he's back next episode, I guess. Well, I mean, he probably will be. Well, not for, like, the crossover, but, like, for when they return to their original story. Yeah. Because we all know they got to take down Rain. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anything else with Supergirl you want to touch on before we move forward? Many shit. Anything else about Supergirl that you want that to talk about? That was about Supergirl. No, it was not. It was not. It was. It was. It was not. 
The man got married. Men and like Supergirl ain't shit. That better? Mm-mm-mm. I'm gonna need you to leave Jimmy alone. Um, um, let's see. Nah, actually, Jimmy can take this win this week, even though he wasn't even in the episode. <laughs> let's talk about the Flash now, because I'm done with you. Um, oh my God, I loved this episode of Flash. Therefore, oh. I am. Let me tell you, this whole episode, I'm just like, yo, why can't y'all listen? He tried to tell you, and then I'm just like. Yo, Barry, chill. He's setting you up. How, why haven't you figured out he's setting you up? Like, it was just a whole lot of just what the fuck going on as I'm watching this show. You know what it reminded me of? And I know you don't, I know you've never, but it kind of reminded me of every movie when Harry was like, you know, hey, Snape is behind this certain thing. Maybe we should keep an eye on him. Or, hey, Voldemort's behind this stuff. Maybe we should keep an eye on him. And everyone's like, Harry, you're letting your bias get sit, get in front of you. Like, yeah, Voldemort killed your parents. Yeah, Snape wasn't a big fan of your father. But it's kind of just like, you know, let it go. And then it turned out it was them. Mm-hmm. That's what it seemed like the entire episode. It was so funny. I can see like, that. they just made him seem like that crazy nigga saying stuff and going crazy. And then Iris tried to pull a whole, is this just pre-wedding jitters? And he's like, nah, bitch, there is something evil about this dude. Like... Yeah, man. She was just like, yo, this ain't about you right now. Acting like a fucking Cowboys fan. Right? Like, she took this as something about them and their wedding. And it was like, bitch, it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, But, yeah, we see, you know, DeVoe is a college professor. And, like, he's... His wife is also ridiculously smart. Yeah. Yeah, he, like, made this device that made him smarter with the... Fucking uh, particle accelerator. Cap is what I'm gonna call it. Well, yeah, that's what he called it. So. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, that's why they're like, yo, he he's not a meta. It was a device that did it. They just used a particle accelerator to power it. Um. True. So yeah, so he's not a meta. Uh. Let me just say one thing that bothered but me. But he this has episode. abilities though. What? Because the, I mean, he kind of does have abilities though. Because um, he needs the cap to, like, survive and shit and to kind of re- and re-up his battery and stuff, his mental battery. But yeah, that was all a result of the device, not the, you know, the particle accelerator actually itself. It was the device they gave him the power. So that's why, like, you know, that's why, like, their test didn't reveal him as a meta or anything. True, um, true, true. Yeah. But. But it was kind of cool to see how he came to become what they now call him the thinker. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So it was kind of cool to see how he got to where he was. Because sometimes they don't they don't always show how. Well, I mean, they sometimes do, but they don't always show how the metas or, like, the villains always come to be. Mm-hmm. Like, they'll give, like, a brief little thing. But they gave, like, everything from, like, how he got his idea to researching his idea and building his idea and enacting his idea. Yeah, most of them it's just like one scene where it's just like, uh, I was out here by this spot right here when it exploded and I got you know, right, like, and then that's it. Yeah. Um, one thing I was seeing in this episode that really bothers me. Maybe it's just me and my experiences, but you know, you've been to college. Is there a bell? Yeah, that was so weird. <laughs> I kept the first time it happened, and I was like, "Did he say he was a professor?" Yeah, this is this is and college. Like, There's no bell. I was, I was like, "Yeah, no," nah, because not every class ends at the same time. Exactly. So there's no bell. What are you doing? Why, why is there a bell? Maybe it's just for the TV, so people know, like you know, it's a school. <laughs> but still, come Instead on. Instead of just being like, "I'm gonna say three lines," and well, look at the time. We yeah. need a bell to signify that time's over. Like, that was annoying. Yeah, yeah. Beyond was, belief. They did it twice. Yeah, it was bothering me. I'm just like, why is there a bell? <laughs> um, uh, Let's see. Yo, they like... <laughs> back to Barry getting set up. Like, 
what made him think that they didn't have cameras in their house if they were able to like plant a camera right on the robots if they were going to plant one in the samurai head, <laughs> uh, robot head what made you think they wouldn't have them all over their house yeah man just like Barry like, I thought on. that shit was ridiculous and because like um what was it Oh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Like, he was, like, all up in, in their house and stuff like that. And then he, oh, yes, here we go. He was walking into the station, just about to brag about how he found something. And I'm just like, if you're being called to the captain's office again, why would you think that's the time to bring that up? Yeah. <laughs> like, Joe was just like, yo, shut up, like, before you get yourself in more trouble. And then try to lie and be like, I did nothing to you, Barry. Barry. They wouldn't just come and say you broke into my house without substantial proof. Yeah, man. So, yeah, once again, how did he not know they had cameras? I don't know. Um, Let's see. We do see that, you know, DeVoe finally reveals who he is. Um, lets him know that, yeah, I know you're the Flash and all that kind of shit, so all the cards are on the table because like he don't he give a said, fuck. Before he said that he knew he was the Flash, I feel like you could tell that he knew he was the Flash. I mean, besides that, you know, he's the thinker because, like, um, when he tried to take the cut from him, but he handed him a business card or whatever, like, mm-hmm. you could almost see it in his face, like, I'm not reading this business card, but I know you're doing something. Well, even so, like, he had the camera inside Star Lab, so clearly he knew, you know. But Barry didn't know that he knew. So that was what that reveal was about, because, you know, if he got the camera inside the lab, they walk around that lab without their masks on and shit. So, um, let's see. Oh, Wally's back. Yeah, but just in time. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to. Got a crossover coming up, so, you know. Because I also was wondering, I was just like, he's taking this time off, but I mean, like, does that mean, like, that's done with Kenyon or Kenyon, or I'm not sure what his actual human name is. Human uh, name. <laughs> what? No, you said his human name, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, he plays a human on the show also. But <laughs> oh, I mean, you know what I mean, like, his, his real life name. <laughs> I know, I know it's something with the K though. I just can't put my finger on what it is. I thought like they were trying to like briefly hint that he wasn't gonna stay in the show, and I was like, no. Nah, he'll stay. He he's not gonna leave completely. Like I said, I think they might move him over to Legends. Um, let's see. I mean, when they kill off Jackson and Stein because they're gonna try and do the impossible. <sighs> <laughs> I hate to be that guy that just like, you know, kill off the black guy, but, you know, when they bring in another black guy, one black guy's got to go. Happens on The Walking Dead all the time. <laughs> you all right over there? Yeah, I'm good. That was a good laugh. <laughs> uh, let's see. So we also see that DeVoe has more hidden cameras inside of the lab. I'm not sure how that happened, but um right? Like where like when are you getting the, when are you getting the time and the chances to put all these cameras? I mean, that's a lie because Felicity already proved that they have like little to neck next to none security mm-hmm. of people to get in there. But I'm just like when are you getting the chances to go in there cuz it feels like they're just always fucking there. There's always at least one person there. Yeah. Unless they're, like, hacking into, um, you know, web cameras and stuff like Big Brother and the government does. Not that I'm saying the government's hacking into our cameras, but they're hacking into our cameras. I mean, they are. When they've seen some shit, and I'm like, ha, enjoy the show. <laughs> um, Yeah. I think that's it for Flash, though. Anything else? Nope. Not enough Dibney in this episode. I'm okay with that. Like, they're, like, I'm okay with him becoming a part of the team, but I felt like last episode was just 
forcing him onto us really quickly. Yeah, well, it was like, train him, so, you know. it was like, yeah, you have this power, and then it was like, boom, now we're gonna phase you into fucking everything. And I'm just like, I don't like. He's even in a commercial with um with Iris now for the Microsoft Surface, and I'm just like, not that important that he needs to be in that fucking commercial. So hostile this week. I'm sorry. Man. If, you, if it makes you, if, it, if you haven't realized, Monel ruined the entire week. Clearly. Like, like he just ruined everything for you because now you're mad at Dibdy having too much screen time because. <laughs> Jesus. Let's talk about Legends, unless, you know, you're mad about that one too. We got Grodd in this episode and, you like. <laughs> Nah, nothing really angered me in Legends. All right, but it did make me realize that I missed last week's episode. Do better. The episode was called yes. "Welcome to the Jungle." Welcome to the jungle, bitch. Sorry, that's a song. Oh, see, I was thinking of the you know the song from the eighties. You know. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it could be from either. Welcome to the jungle. Yeah. Oh yeah, that song. Okay, yeah, probably from that because yeah. it had everything to do with war and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see. We open up and Sarah's in a coma, and that was my first clue that I had missed something because I said, "How the fuck is Sarah in a coma? She was fine the last time nah, I checked." she wasn't. Damien Dark fucked her up. So yeah. So I guess I'll just go back and eventually watch Helen Hunt. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, you missed some shit. You got Themyscira and everything. Uh. Um, let's see. So yeah, Sarah's st- still in Matt's her coma. Matt's gonna hear this, and he's gonna be like, "Fire her!" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got like some episodes under his belt now. He's been jockeying for your spot for, right. for a long time. Right, he's gonna be like, "Oh, I'm so going to court with this custody case." <laughs> 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 oh man. So Stein is working on a way to, you know, separate him and Jax, you know, so Jax can keep the firestorm power. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not working. Stein out. has apparently been working on. Can't really. What'd you say? It said Stein said he had been working on it, but and he said he had a handle on it, but apparently he doesn't because he had Isaac Newton and. Uh, Marie Curie and who was the other dude? Man, I don't know. Some old smart dudes. <laughs> yeah. I stopped trying to figure out who was who after a while. Um, but yeah, they end up having to go to Vietnam because there's an anachronism in Vietnam. So they go. Mick doesn't want to go because, you know, my dad's here. And I don't like my dad. I killed him, you know. <laughs> so. This episode was this major daddy issues. <clears throat> yeah. And then we meet his dad and his fucking Cheddar Bob <laughs> from 8 Mile. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, really? Really? Cheddar Bob? Okay. <laughs> so from that point on, I could never take him seriously because every time I looked at him, I saw the dude that shot himself in his leg. Like, dangerously close Mm -hmm. to his own dick. And it's just... (laughs) Man. It's like, out of all the 8 Mile characters you could have got, you got this dude. (coughs) You could have got Eminem, and I could have taken him more seriously. Yeah, yeah. But it was fucking Cheddar Bob. Actually, that would have been pretty dope. Eminem guest guest stars in this episode as Mick's father. Yeah. He already has that kind of, like, pent-up rage as it is. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Anyway, I mentioned earlier, we got Grodd. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he's been, like, brainwashing people and shit. Because, you know, he's telepathic and all that. Like, yo, follow me, because humans suck, and we're going to fix this shit. But he, what really is going on is, like, he wants to start World War Three. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, right after 2 just kind of ended, like, a few years past, right? I'm really confused about the timeline between World War Two and Vietnam. They said it was 1969, so that was, like, 24 years after World War Two. Okay. 
Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, Maya goes up to him because she ain't scared of him. Um. Oh, to Grad. Yeah. Almost. She talks can turn him out into a it. monkey too. Yeah, almost talks him out. We'll harness of the it. power. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Ah, and then Grad is all like, "Oh, I want your time machine," and so he goes tries to take the time machine, try to take the Wave Rider. Uses his telepathic powers to take control of Sarah's body and has her whooping people ass for him. And I'm just like, well, right. damn. Because <laughs> at first I saw him like, oh, shit, she's awake. All right. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Right. Oh, like, I shit. thought, like, I thought, like, you know, maybe God shaking the ship up a little bit. Yeah, was like, woke her up. Sarah was like, the f- fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it was like, nope. God just mind jumped into her body. Mm-mm-mm. Um. Oh, we also got an appearance from uh LBJ. That's Lyndon B. Johnson, not LeBron James. Um. Oh God. See, that was going on. Jack saves his life because you know folks wasn't listening at first until somebody steps on a landmine and then they're all fucked. It's all fun and games till your commander in chief steps on a landmine. Yeah, basically. It's just like yo. Pay attention, kids. Pay attention. Um, let's see. Ah, so this whole thing with Mick and his daddy issues, eventually he's like, yo, I'm feeling remorse. Because I got to know my dad. I realized it wasn't all his fault. He just had some fucked up shit going on. And I feel bad for burning him inside that house. Then it's just like, yo, so did he change shit? Because if he changed shit, then that's, that's the problem. That's what I was getting ready to ask. That's what I was wondering the entire time. Because, like, from the beginning, like, we knew that it was going to change Mick's perspective about his father because that's just how TV works. Mm-hmm. But I was kind of wondering, like, does that change anything in his course of time? So does that mean, does his dad, like, does he never let his father burn to death? Is his dad now still alive? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so it's like now is it like okay? Did he like, did the interaction between them stop his dad from becoming such a dick, and so he doesn't burn the house with him inside it? You know, um, right. So if that doesn't happen, does Mick still become Mick? You know. Yeah. But apparently, it doesn't really make a difference because they, you know. I was gonna say I kind of hope that like we would kind of slightly see a slight change. In Mick, I like him just the way he. You is. know, like. <laughs> well, I mean, like nothing that like would change like what he does and how he does everything, but I mean, like, would we see like a slight attitude change in Mick? Nope, I like his attitude. I don't want that. Okay. All right. <laughs> I want Mick to continue to be the evil criminal asshole that he's always been, because he makes me laugh. Um, let's see. If you say so. We also, so Sarah actually finally does wake up and. Because yeah. pie. Yeah, she wants the pie because apparently that's so very valuable is a recipe for pecan pie. I've heard that rumor before, though, that one of the president's wives had like a recipe that was like super crazy and super top secret. I guess. It's like a fun, random fact about mm-hmm. history. I mean, I hear you. It's just, you know. <sighs> um. Ah, so take away from this episode at the end. Uh, Dark has Grodd in the present now. So, yeah. That's a thing. So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, because I really... I really hate that we took Damien Dark back to a time period where he could bother everyone, and this nigga still managed to pop up and bother everyone. Hmm? Say that again? I mean, like, because I love how we managed to take Damien. They dropped Damien Dark in a time period where he can't really fuck shit up, and then we still managed to get Damien Dark 
back into the current time period to fuck shit up. Yeah, well, you know, that's his daughter's problem. She's the one that re reawoke him after Oliver killed him, so it's just now he has all this knowledge and he's just, you know. Like we've defeated this dude twice already. Why do we have to defeat him a third time? Same reason why we keep having to defeat Reverse Flash. <laughs> well, not this season, so I guess so. Yeah. But I think um, for what I saw from the previews on uh, the crossover, like we're going to see him there. Maybe I missed something. Or maybe I Probably. maybe I saw something that I didn't actually see, you know. But I think I saw Thawne in that trailer. Um. So, yeah. Grah's in the present now, and he's working with Damien Dark. <coughs> Anything else with Legends you want to touch on nah. before we move on? <clears throat> nah. I don't know why, but whenever Grah's in the episode, it doesn't make me excited. Well, I'll be excited enough for the both of us. Thank you. Because I enjoy Gorilla Grodd. Um, Arrow then. Let's talk about Arrow. Let's do that. This episode, Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving, yeah. I was, I'm not going to lie. I was low-key surprised they actually had an episode on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I thought. Considering that it was Thanksgiving Yeah, I thought they football. would. Yeah, I thought they'd put it off to next week also. But, no. I guess they figured, like, you know, we got to go ahead and do this because we got the crossover next week, so. Maybe that was some kind of thing they had to make sure they got going. Yeah, I guess. I guess they're trying to get all the shows to go on break all the same week. So mm. it's probably so it just lines up. Because I guess they didn't want to do thanks, a Thanksgiving-themed episode after mm-hmm. Thanksgiving or before. I don't know. I hear you. That's the thing. It being Thanksgiving really didn't have that much of an effect on the story. So they could have done this episode without it being Thanksgiving. Sure. But, um, yeah, since it is Thanksgiving, though, they're having a food drive right outside the new police station. And while they're opening up the police station, Oliver gets arrested. And I'm just like, well, damn, it was that necessary. <laughs> hey. <laughs> There's so many other places where you could arrest him. But, like, at... A big event in front of all these people, including his son. You decide to arrest him there. And speaking of his son, you know, while he's in that interrogation room, he's like, I want to speak to my son. They just talking all openly and freely and shit like they don't have microphones hidden in there. (laughs) Right. What was I going to say? I do like that we get like a lot of shows, like no matter where it's from have been having, like, a nice, strong black woman in, like, a official power. But this bitch is getting on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Cause, like, she, like, it's like, when when she came out and, like, had Oliver arrested, I was just like, I hope this nigga sues her for Melissa's prosecution. And then he goes and says it, and I was like, that's right, boy. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, yo, I'm gonna need you to chill. Like, God, this is unnecessary. I mean, it's kind of hot, but it's unnecessary. Right? Like, you're just doing extra. Like, Yeah. And I wouldn't know what her proof was. <laughs> yeah, and they won't tell us. I'm upset that they never showed us. Now we got to wait two weeks. They're not going to show us next week. Well, it's only a two-night event. So I don't think Arrow's part of the crossover next week. True. So maybe you only got to wait a week. Maybe, but maybe. what if they're not having anything for Thursday? Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe if there's no arrow next week, that'd be sad. Then we I can really, find out. We'll know by the end of this episode. <laughs> then we really do have to wait two weeks, and I'm just like, well, damn. Um. Anyway, yeah. She she arrests him. Um. Curtis has some new shit. To try to fix John. But turns out the shit doesn't work. <coughs> Cause it's a prototype. That and John's going through withdrawals from the other drug he was taking. That sucks. Yeah. So it's just like, 
Sucks to be you. Um. Oh, so in the meantime, <laughs> Laurel and Caden James are still in shit. Right, they're still doing stuff. And I was just like, could you not do this this week? Like, Oliver's in jail, and, like, he can't come and stop you guys because he's too busy trying to prove that he's not the Arrow. He's trying to prove that John's not the Arrow. I was like, could you guys just wait, like, a couple of weeks? Like, yeah, shit. Yeah, man, have some consideration. Just, <laughs> just rude, man. Um, My favorite thing about this whole episode, though, was, once again... People getting set up because they're like, yo, there's a bomb in here and there's no bomb in there. And they're like, yo, you know, you got fake cops in here keeping people from getting out. And they start whooping the fake cops ass. And for some reason, thought it wouldn't get the video of it wouldn't get out. They got security cameras all over that bitch. Like, right. and there's people with phones with cameras on them all over that bitch. Like, how did you not see this coming? Um, let's see. Yeah, apparently this is somebody else who wants revenge on Oliver. Seems to be a common theme with his, uh, <laughs> with his big bads on his show. You got Slade wanting revenge on him. He had fucking, uh, Prometheus last, last season that wanted revenge on him. Now we got Caden James that wants revenge on him. It's just, bruh. We need you to stop pissing people off. Right? This is what happens when you spend, like, two seasons just killing niggas, for, like, without thinking about future consequences. Yeah. So sad. Like, do better. Anyway, back to John, because he's got nerve damage spreading all over his body and shit. Right. Uh. So, yeah, he can't do shit no more, because, you know... You know, if he keeps doing shit, he can be paralyzed because, you know, they ain't fixed him yet. So Oliver suits up and he's back. Now he's lying about it. (laughs) Right. I was just like, ah, come on. Which is just, you know, hey, that's the way it always was before, before he started, like, telling everybody that he was the arrow. (laughs) This is true. Which is part of the reason why I feel like he's going in the mess he's in right now. Because he done told too many people. Too many people know he was the arrow There's already. There's too many people know. And I feel like half of them need to die. Yeah. I mean, you know the old saying, three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Exactly. And I feel like, I feel like Diggle knowing was one thing and it was unavoidable. I feel like once it got to Thea, Roy, fucking, uh... His mother, <laughs> his mom, uh, Felicity, and and uh, what is Sarah's father's name? Uh, Quentin. Quentin, and uh, I'm just like, and then when he revealed himself to the new team, I'm just like, ah, oh! and look where how the new team got, look where the new team got him. I have a side note. Did they ever catch what's her face? Evelyn. Evelyn, yes. Evelyn's still running around here, and she knows his identity. Is she still running around? Did she die on the island? Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. I don't know if she died on the island or not, though, but the thing is, you know, if you don't see their dead body, they're not officially dead, so... Right. And Laurel made it out of there, too, so... I mean, well, evil Laurel made it out of there, so who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went through that whole thing, and the only one that died is the baby mama. Yeah, so it's kind of just like there's too many goddamn people that know his fucking identity. Yeah, it is kind of ridiculous. But then, dun dun dun, dun Theo wakes up. Love it. It's just so weird hearing w- when William called him Auntie Thea. Yeah, that was I was just like, odd. I don't know if it's just like, the, I don't know if it's that this kid just kind of just can't act that well. Or if it's just the auntie and then Thea, rather than just saying Aunt Thea. Either way, like even I think even if you heard him say Aunt Thea, it would have sounded awkward. It's just the whole idea of somebody calling her Aunt anything is just awkward. 
Yeah, I guess that's it. It was just really weird to hear it. Yeah, he's... Yeah. Also... How is she going to contribute? Like, you know, how long will she be in the hospital? Will we see her back as Speedy at some point, you know? Right. Is she just going to go back to, like, his political team or... Or, like, what's happening here? Yeah, we'll see. It's going to take some time, though, I'm sure, a couple episodes at least before we get anything out of that. Yeah. Um, is there anything else? Well, we see. We talked about how Oliver is suiting up again and lying about it until he's like, until Diggle is back on his feet and everything, and you can have it back. He just came out and said, like, yo. John actually. I just feel like this whole thing is stupid. But then when I thought about it, I was just like, "How would you find another arrow, though? Would you just tap? Would you have to have like secret, like a secret hideout, like a secret like tryout for them to come to?" Yeah, well, like like, you like know what archery I mean? competitions, like in Robin Hood. <laughs> yeah, like do you just kind of like leave a notice, like do you just stalk them for a few weeks and then like put notices on their on their thing saying, "Hey." If you're into being a vigilante and want to save this city, be here at this time on this day. Honestly, if I was them, I'd go find Roy. That's what he I would could. do. I'd go find he's Roy. Not real, he's not officially dead on the show, so. Yeah, I'd go find Roy, and I'd put him, you know, like, listen, you're going to live down here in the bunker, you know? But, yeah. You're going to live, eat, breathe, shit, and sleep in this bunker. Yeah, you don't go out. Because if you go out, people might, you know, see you. So the only time you go out is when you are dressed as the Green Arrow. Which still bothers me that, like, you know, there was the Arrow, and now there's the Green Arrow, who is supposed to be somebody completely different, which, you know, Watson called him on, like, yo, that's fucking stupid. We know it's the same person. <laughs> like... <laughs> Um, and even I feel like even William knows. Even though I feel like Oliver lied to him, said Green Arrow wasn't there. Like William's not dumb. He's just like, my dad wasn't home. You were here, and the whole team of Green Arrow was there, but Green Arrow wasn't. So what you're saying is that you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Uh let's see. I think that's about it for this episode. Anything else you want to talk about? Nope, that's it. I kind of just want to see how he's going to do the crossover and then what's going to follow in the weeks to come and blah, blah, blah. Speaking of the because... crossover, let's let's touch on that for a minute because okay. that's exciting because the crossover is next week. Is it just Monday and Tuesday? That's what it or said. Or is it Monday and Thursday? It said two-night okay. crossover, so I'm guessing it's Monday and Tuesday. Oh, okay, because everything keeps saying it only just says Monday in this the is, commercial. So. Yeah, two night crossover starting Monday. Yeah, so I'm guessing it's Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so basically, Crisis on Earth X. Earth X is the fifty third Earth. Are we Earth X? No. No. Oh. No. No. Because. You know, Earth X, they said it is, you know, an Earth where the Nazis won. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, we're totally not Earth so, X. So, I mean, I mean, in a way, you might be able to say, yeah, it's Earth X. But, um. Yeah, you know, today. Yeah, yeah. But that's, no, we're not Earth X. Um, I forgot where they said we are. It's. Um, let's see. Uh, Some two digits. Hmm? hmm? Something two digits, I think. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, so the heroes, I guess you could say, or their counterparts from Earth X are there. And they found a very convenient way to be able to have them both on screen at the same time. They have their counterparts wearing masks. So I'm just like, ah, good, good idea. So now Arrow can fight Arrow. Because I knew if they brought up like Cyborg Superman one more time, they would just have John John's face as like the random counterparts and mm -hmm. you'd be like the fuck is this i could only imagine the rage that would come with that oh yeah oh yeah but yeah they got you know the earth x 
versions of everybody wears this mask. And so they can just get a good stunt double, put the mask on, let's do it. And they can fight each other. So that's like, you know, save them on the CGI budget and shit. But yeah, it's taking place at the wedding. Well, starts with the wedding. And Nazis show up because why not? Because what's a 2017 show without Nazis? Yeah. But yeah. And they go at it. Mick's excited because he gets to kill Nazis. So he's like, best wedding ever. I want someone to say Nazis like an Inglorious Bastards. (laughs) uh, Let's go uh, kill some Nazis. Or uh, how Cartman said it on Family Guy like, Nazi. <laughs> but yeah. All right, Mar. Who's winning this week? The Thinker. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Definitely. Who's losing? Because I was, I was going to oh. give an explanation because I was going to say, because why? While Barry knows that the thinker is, you know, who, like, while they do know who he is, he is, like, fully, like, 50 steps ahead of them. Oh, definitely. The whole so, time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know how they're going to pull this one off. But who's losing? I think it's safe to say who isn't losing. Um, pick one, though. I am going to pick one. Um. Uh, I'm just doing a quick process of elimination in my head. We got Kara because Monel's a piece of shit right now. And then we got, I would say Oliver, but he's not fully losing. So I'm not going to put him in there. But I would say Barry was kind of losing for a moment because everyone made it seem like he was crazy. Um, but I'm gonna go with Kara. Oh, looks like we are in full agreement this week. Yeah, yeah, we are in full agreement. I was thinking Kara was losing too. I did want to, you know, throw up an honorable mention for Diggle though, because he's kind of losing too. Yeah, yeah, he's an honorable mention, but I think Kara edged him out. Um, yeah. Anything else you wanted to talk about before we get out of here? Nah, that was it. Okay. Well, Mara, great to have you back. It was great to be back. Yeah. This will be it for this week's episode of Super Flashy Arrow of Tomorrow. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on both Twitter and Instagram at Creation Magazine. You can also find us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Creation Magazine. Um, also, don't forget to join the Facebook group, Super Flashy Arrow of Tomorrow. I will occasionally post memes as I find them. Yeah, yeah. And post your own in there, too, you know? Talk to right. it. Right, or any any thoughts or comments or jokes or you just want to shit on one of the characters' lives, go for it. We'll talk about it if I see it. Yeah, why not? Um, What else? Well, you can find me on both Twitter and Instagram at sir underscore cussalot. That is at S-I-R underscore C-U-S-S-A-L-O-T-T. Where can they find you, Mar? Find me on Instagram and Twitter at Mara the Shark underscore. That's M A R A D A S H A R K with an underscore at the end. All right. That'll be it. We'll see you all next week. Hopefully. <laughs> I'll be here next week. I don't know about Mara, but we'll see you I will next do week. my best. Until then, Until stay then. creative, stay free. Laters. <laughs>